Hello and most welcome to 12.08. We will continue with Life Death, Jacques Derrida. And we are into the second session, page 33 for you who follow. little recap from the previous time. We took a look at the Nietzschean return of time, one of his most, say, remarkable features in his thinking, and how there is a connection to the circle. Circle is the ring, the hymen, the alliance of the eternal return. We, um, I also proposed an alternative with the Mavia strip. Mavia strip being, being one plus something. It is the turn in the Mavia strip when it changes direction, the twist. The test equals one extra. So in the lecture 1606, we compared it to Gematria. We saw that there is a much closer connection. There is in numbers and, so to speak, what they represent there. Closeness is directly. I continue with the second paragraph on page 33, the English translation. The difficulty we would have in thinking the date of such an event, this event of the autobiographical narrative, which requires like the thought of eternal return, thinking otherwise the coming of any event. This difficulty cannot but crop up everywhere one seeks to date an event, to identify the beginning of a text. Hmm. Listen to that. The beginning of a text. Where would you find that in the circle? Well, even better, the origin of life or the first movement of a signature, its borders, its border. The beginning of life, the beginning of the universe, they're all similar and they end up in trouble with the circle. This structure of an exigue as a kind of bordering or of a bordering as exigue. Cannot fail to be reimprinted.
to reverb reverberate. Everywhere it is a question of life or of something like my life. This exiguous structure between the title or the preface on the one hand and the book to come on the other situates the place from which life will be recounted, recited, that is to say, affirmed as having eternally to return. Linked by the wedding ring to itself. The place of this affirmation or this exigue that is neither simply in the work nor simply in the life of the author. The place of this exigue that repeats the affirmation. That endorses, signs, subscribes, the place moment of the exigue that buries the negativity. And thus buries, buries even the shadow is the place and the moment of the noon, the noon of life. What the exegue I just read says will eventually actually get taken up again in the chapter. Why I write such good books. My duty to prepare a moment of the highest self-examination for humanity. A great noon when it looks back and far forward. When it emerges from the dominion of accidents and priests. But the noon of life is neither a place nor a moment. It is not a place or a moment.
first of all, because it is a limit that immediately vanishes, but then also because it returns daily, every day, each day, with each turn of the ring. If we are entitled to read Friedrich Nietzsche's signature only in this place and at this instant, in the place and at the instant he signs by saying, yes, yes. I myself and I myself recite my life to myself. You can begin to see the impossible protocol for reading and teaching that this constitutes and how pathetically naive it can be to say Nietzsche wrote this. Nietzsche said that. Nietzsche thinks this or that about life, for example. Life in the sense of human existence or biological life, etc. It's a lot of connections to Hans van Rijkop, of course, here, and how we today see life as a thing. I am not going to read Eke Homo with you. I am going to have to make do with this forward or forewarning about the place of the exegete the place of the fold it makes along a barely apparent limit insofar. As there is no longer any shadow, the place from which all the other utterances before and after, left and right, are at once possible. Nietzsche said it all, and necessarily contradictory. He said the most contradictory things, and he said that he said the most seemingly contradictory things.
just one indication of this contradictory duplicity before leaving Ekehuno. Right after what I'm calling the exodus and the point of view of the exodus, which does not hesitate to date his birth, his birthday, the quarter of the year in which he received the gift of his last books, etc. The beginning of the first chapter, Why am I so wise? Begins with the origins of my life, my father and my mother. Then immediately thereafter, the principle of contradiction in my life. This contradiction of my life, which is my destiny, has to do with my genealogy, with my father and my mother, with what I express in the form of an enigma as the identity of my father. And the identity of my mother, in a word, my dead father and my living mother. My father as the dead man and as death, my mother as the living and as life and I am between the two and my truth takes after the two of them You know this text that I am going to read and retranslate. The good fortune glick of my existence, its uniqueness perhaps, lies in its fatality. I am to express it in the form of an enigma, already dead as my father, while as my mother I am still living and becoming old.
The text says, I am my father orally dead. As my mother, I am still living and becoming old. And I would say this is the circle. This is full circle. Going in to existence. Existence is a seventh number movie strip. It has sameness as at the simultaneous moment, it also has difference. Dead father, living mother. So insofar as I am, after my father, I am dead, the dead, death, insofar as I am, and follow after my mother. I am the life that perseveres, the living, she the living. I am my father, my mother, and myself. my father, my mother, and therefore my son and myself, death and life. The dead and the living and so on. That is who I am. Ich bin der und der. This means all of that. And one cannot hear my name if one does not hear it as that of. He the dead and she the living. that of the dead father and the mother who lives on, who will have outlived me and buried me. Moreover, because it is a living life that will have buried me, and the name of my living life is the name of the mother. The name of my dead life, the name of my father, One must thus take this scene into account each time one claims to identify a statement by Friedrich Nietzsche. And the statement I just read is not autobiographical in the usual sense of the term. This does not mean that it is incorrect to say that Nietzsche speaks, as we would say, of his real father or mother.
It is just that he also speaks of them in Ghetzel form. That is to say, symbolically. Or rather, enigmatically. The enigma being a story, a proverbial morality in the form of a narrative. What then follows in the text draws all the consequences of the double origin of my life insofar as my life is born, both from he, the dead, and she, the living. From death and life, from the father and the mother, this double origin explains who and how I am, double and neuter, neutral. This is, of course, the same as the fixated dead DNA that is rigorous in its copying of life unliving, mechanical, dead, the one part of biological ideology, the other one being the contingent, flexible, thinking brain, the one that has flexibility exceptions, living, moldable, not completely fixed, changeable, not mechanical. This double origin reminds very much of the double spiral. I will make this an a episode and I'll continue with a B with a, a little bit more reading and summary. I'm a bit too tired here to continue. Uh, I will stop the recording.